Oof, well, it's been almost a month. Sorry I haven't been around, I had a day that went on for a long time. But now I finally managed to get some time between not dying to talk about Sonic. Because, yes, that's all I do. That's all I do. So, you know Sonic Extreme, right? Arguably the most well-known cancelled Sonic game out there. This game was supposed to release back in 1996 and absolutely crushed both Mario and Crash. But while Mario was changing the way 3D games would play in the future, Sonic was responsible for almost killing a person. Let's start from the beginning. Sonic Extreme began life as the next main entry in the Sonic franchise. After Sonic and Knuckles, Sega wanted to keep the momentum going after three highly successful games. Sega had two directions to go with this new project. Either go with Peter Morrowick's idea for a slower, more story-driven Sonic game based off the Sonic set I am, or go with Chris Sen and his idea for an isometric Sonic game. In the end, Sega went with neither, but the isometric idea laid the foundation for the third pitch, Sonic Mars, led by Michael Kosaka with the help of Chris Sen. This was to be the first 3D Sonic game, the actual first one, and also following the plot of Set I Am. The project had it all, it was 3D, it had the Freedom Fighters, it was set to destroy all expectations, it was for the 32X. One very infamous account of this pitch was when they showed it to Juji Naka. The guy watched it, shook his head and said, good luck, oh, fucking savage. Since the 32X failed miserably and it wasn't the best for 3D games, like, at all, the project was swiftly moved onto the Saturn. This is when Sonic Mars transformed into Sonic Extreme, and when the trouble began. Following a dispute between Kosaka and Comic Zone producer Dean Lester, Kosaka left the company in 1995. But before he left, he put expert in not being in charge, Chris Sen, in charge of the project. After this, things just got really messy. Development was sloppy, people coming and going, pressure building up, postponed dates. Everything that could have gone wrong with this project, went wrong with this project. Now, if you want to go into the full details of what happened during the development of Sonic Extreme, I'm going to link this video right here. But what we're looking out here is for the plot. Like, what actual plot could this have? Well, actually, there was a bunch of storylines being thrown around. And luckily, Sonic Retro has all the stories laid down. Manual entries, everything. So let's take a look at some of them, starting from the absolute beginning, the plot of Sonic Mars. While Sonic is away checking on a security alarm in a remote part of the Great Forest, his pals Sally, Bonnie, Tails, and kn Knuckles have discovered a strange message from within one of Robotnik's supercomputers. Dr. Robotnik is trying to take over the computer BR world, Micromovius, what? And the message is a plea for help from its peaceful inhabitants. Sonic returns to Nuthole to discover that Robotnik has captured his friends and taken them into this BR world. Sonic attempts to save his friends and thwart Robotnik's plan to reformat Micromobius. This is a story that was worked on when the game was still a set I am game. The plot is simple, doesn't feel Sonic set I am at all, if you know what I mean. It feels more like the plot to BR Troopers. Uh, I guess I can see why they scrapped that one. Now, for Sonic Saturn's story, we have two interpretations, the game book introduction and the main game introduction. Let's take a look at the game book introduction first. Peace reign in Mobius, following Robotnik's defeat in the Floating Island adventure. For a long time, the inhabitants enjoyed a tranquil existence. It seems to most Mobites, Mo Mobites? that Robotnik had packed his bag and left the world for a different place. Sonic, though, had a different opinion. For as long as he could remember, Ivor Robotnik had a burning desire to control the power of the Chaos Emeralds. It seemed odd that he would ever lose interest in them. Sonic wanted to get to the bottom of this mystery and send Tails to the floating island for Knuckles. Once together, Sonic, Tails and Knuckles formulated a search plan. Deciding to meet back at Nuthole with any news on Robotnik's whereabouts, Knuckles and Tails took off to the skies in the biplane while Sonic scorched across the land. That was the last Sonic saw of his friends. Holy shit. I feel like the seeds for series Sonic stories was planted here. I don't know, it's the way the story is written. I kinda feel like it's trying to be like this grandiose adventure. I mean, I like it, but... Eh. Fly in a spiral Mobius Chronicles newspaper reading Knuckles and Tails missing, with pictures. Knuckles with determined look and a hint of a smile and Tails with his classic big smile. And fake text below. Cross this all to a dim scene of Robotnik's palace. A wacky observatory shaped like his head, spreading pollution into the grey sky. The camera slowly zooms into one of the eyeglass windows to reveal a dark and mechanical laboratory. 
Knuckles and Tails are trapped in a cage stationed against a circular interior wall. Dr. Robotnik stands facing the Master Chaos Emerald in the center of the room. All sorts of robotic arm construction are drilling and sapping the huge gemstone, trying to tap into its mysterious power. The flashes bottom light Robotnik's face. After a few moments, the doctor notices something strange. Leaning closer, he looks curiously disturbed as the Master Emerald glitters and clouds within. Suddenly, the gem explodes in a flash of light, hurling Robotnik back against the wall next to Knuckles and Tails. The dark room is lit by rapid pulses of black light as the three stare in awe. Cut to the Master Emerald spilling out loads of foggy smoke. Cut to Knuckles and Tails looking curiously at each other. Out of the gemstone and into the mist glide small flickering lights almost like fireflies. Cut to Robotnik sprawled on the floor, propping himself up, looking exalted and a bit frightened by the spectacle. Six tall shadows materialize and loom large over Dr. Robotnik and Tails. Truck into Robotnik's sweating, shocked looks as the shadow draw in and smother him. Cut to a serene nut valley flourishing with green vegetation, set in front of a classic blue sky with puffy white clouds floating slowly by. Camera zooms out to reveal this is a reflection of Sonic's high-tech binoculars as he studies the scene from inside a nut hole tree. Sonic gets a start as a huge dark cloud bank rockets across the sky in the distance. Lightning and a crackling thunder pierce the air. Sonic sips down the door and spirals down the treehouse trunk stairs to the ground as the storm blows closer. Sonic looks into the sky with a scowl before dashing down the hillside into the valley. On course to meet the dark storm head on, Sonic starts the game in Orange Grove Zone Zero. I like this explanation more actually, feels like a natural progression. First we had 6 emeralds, then we had 7, then we had the super emeralds and the master emerald. Now we're getting inside there to see what's what. Not bad, if anything I would have liked the emeralds to actually have Nasso. Now this one is a pretty bad one, I don't like it at all. Sonic wants to meet up with Tiara for a date, though the distance between them presents a bit of a problem. Sonic hands in his knot hole crib while Manx Baby chills in her pop's kingdom a thousand miles away. Sonic's got to race into and over many secret hills and valleys to get to his love. Tiara waits calmly, but cameo footage reveals her increasing impatience. The longer he takes, the more miffed she'll be when he arrives. Sonic figures a little necklace and out with seven certain chaos emeralds would make for a nifty gift to cheer her up. Unfortunately, via his sneaky spy satellite, S3 Egg Boy Robotnik gets wind of Sonic chivalric endeavor and sets out to stop him. Dr. Robotnik decides that it's a great time for his new super duper mega ray cannon. Tested on impulse power, the cannon beamed on secluded forests in Mobius, causing its trees to rip from the ground and float in various orientations. Filled with devilish glee after a few more successful experiments, Robotnik schemes a way to stop Sonic from stealing the emeralds and to trap him forever. Having developed a spring switch device to control plant, metal, and even whole houses, cars, etc., all ripped off floating angelically in various angles in the sky. What a trip! So now to complicate the distance time issue, Sonic has a warp twisted world to navigate through that's filled with Robotnik's badniks, and to think that all Sonic wants is a nice, quiet, good old fashioned date. It's going to be more than half the fun getting there. What the fuck is this? Is this an episode of Adventures? This just feels like a Looney Tunes plot. Is this a remake to Menace Beach? And what's the surprise? No. Sonic starts the game with the task of rescuing a damsel in distress. Tiara, a beautiful Manx kitten, has been changed to a wooden platform dangled loosely over the bed of spikes. Without a second thought, Sonic nimbly rescues her from certain doom. Trouble, she thanks him but says that he was a trap set up by Sonic's arch nemesis, Robotnik. She explains that the chains that bound her were laced with a deadly virus, and by touching them Sonic became infected with the doom sickness. Only one man knows the cure, and he's in the castle atop Misty Peak, she continues. Sonic thanks her and dashes off. Making his way through the woods, Sonic finds himself looking out on a huge sleepy valley, prefacing what appears to be the Misty Peak. Stopping only moments to admire the view, Sonic zooms down to the valley to find a route to the castle. Reaching it without much trouble, Sonic enters the open drawbridge with echoes careening off the damp stone walls. An old, stooped man steps into the courtyard. Who are you, and what do you want? Yells the man. 
Sonic unsure of this predicament exclaims, I'm Sonic, and the kitten Tiara told me to find the man in the castle, on Misty Key. The old man, rising an eyebrow, responds, How do you know Tom? Sonic explains that he rescued her, ending with, And she told me that, I guess you are the only one with the cure. That is so, I apologize for being so inhospitable. I'm Professor Bubovsky and my daughter Tara was kidnapped by Robin Mac a short while ago. Thank you so much for rescuing her, but enough about that, let's get you to Bobowski grabs Sonic and they scramble down the basement stairs. The dangling lamp slowly flickers with a buzz illuminating an old classic laboratory, like something from a cheesy sci-fi film. Vials with fluid bubble and boil to life as the professor wakes the all forgotten laboratory. I haven't been down here in years, exclaims the professor as he leads Sonic's down yet another flight of stairs. They enter a large stone room with ancient shields and tapestry hung on its walls resting above floor plates painted with painstaking detail. In response to Sonic's questioning glance, Bobowski explains that this is a twist chamber. Too old to go and find all of the ingredients for your cure, says Bobowski. This room lets you get to the different worlds that have what you'll need. This is how it works, just walk onto the floor plate, it represents the world you wish to go to, tell me you're ready to now hit the wall switch to whisk you away. How do I get back? Pipes, Sonic. Well, once you complete the world task, you're automatically whisked back. I'll tell you each task and fill you in on pointers to keep you out of trouble. Has Robotnet got into any of these worlds? Grumbled Sonic. Not to my knowledge, but be careful anyways, or... I almost forgot. These worlds are a little different than I'm sure you and you, sir. Sonic squints his eyes wearily. What do you mean? Well, the gravity in them is a bit strange. You can walk on walls and ceilings and such. What? How can I do that? Barks a wide-eyed Sonic. You'll figure it out early. You don't have much time. Pick a world and I'll send you there. This one kind of reminds me of the virus arc from the IDW comics, though not as doomy. Not bad, seems like a nice starting point, I guess. This one is pretty huge and lengthy, so I'm just gonna read you the non-interactive intro. Sonic, you've been poisoned. What? Don't I even get a thank you? Yes, but oh Sonic. You must hurry, I'm weak from the case, you must go to my father in the castle. He's the only one who knows the cure. Hurry Sonic, before it's too late for us all. Right here. Just go. With no time to waste, Sonic spin dashes into the distance as the dark scene fades quickly to white. Again, I'm not gonna go too into detail with this one, it's super huge. It's so big that it actually sets up a sequel at the end. This one is... weird. Chris Sen wrote it, and I don't know... Long ago, there was an evil man named Ivor Robotnik. He spent his time building robots that built smoky factories that churn out more robots with one goal. To take over the world. Thank goodness for one courageous creature. Enter Sonic, a fast and furious little hedgehog intent on having fun in the sun. Through the use of his wits and speed, Sonic was able to defeat the evil Robotnik and stop his abomination. With the help of creatures from the world, Sonic jettisoned Robotnik to a galaxy far, far away, hoping the rotund recluse would start his life anew. For years, the world enjoyed peace. The air was clean and the creatures were safe. No more robots, no more terror. But one day, things changed. Creatures began disappearing from their homes without a trace. More and more dark shapes moved soundlessly through the night. A shadow engulfed the world and everyone knew something bad was about to happen. Sonic on vacation in the ice caps, a snow dashing back to the lodge, taking turns and jumps at high speeds, the little blue hedgehog is a streak of swiftness. As Sonic drops down the final frozen run, he notices something strange. There is no bridge. What the fuck? Gasps Sonic as he skids, arguing to stop beside the crystal chasm. Sonic wipes his brown in relief. Suddenly, a huge black spider-like shape rises from the ravine. Sonic leaps in panic surprise as the scene fades to black. Sonic wakes up to find himself captured by this space balloon, a pod designed by Robotnik to trap life forms for future use. Sonic's been traveling millions of light years in space balloons returning to Robotnik's massive dead egg. 
Once Sonny realizes what's going on, he spin dashes the heck out of the pod's computer panels, sending him hurtling towards the Jade Gully jungle planet. Oh, I don't know, I don't know what I feel about the black spider shape thing. I don't know, what they're I, don't know. I don't know about the rages fast and furious Sonic. God. And finally, we have the plot that stopped. This was to be the actual plot of the game, and, uh, well, just listen. After Robotnik's defeat in the floating island, things returned to normal for Sonic and his friends. Robotnik, however, had not been idle, and returned with an even grander scheme to conquer the world. Robotnik has rebuilt his dead egg fortress, larger than Sonic's entire world. So powerful is its gravity that it can rip planets from their orbits. Already several planets orbited the huge fortress, and Robotnik would not rest until Sonic's world was in his clutches as well. Already the world was being drawn to the dead egg. Sonic had to act quickly to stop Robotnik. Tails had managed to create a working teleport pod that could send Sonic to the dead egg. There was no time to contact Knuckles, so Tails will stay behind and operate the teleport pod, and Sonic will travel to the heart of the dead egg and destroy it. But as Sonic was teleporting, one of the small planets surrounding the dead egg changed the course and intercepted Sonic. Sonic found himself in a strange world, surrounded by bad Nick robots. Already, the inhabitants of this world had been captured and changed into his evil minions. Robotnik had prepared a cunning trap, and Sonic had walked right into it. Everything had gone as Robotnik had planned. He knew that Sonic would try to get to his new dead egg, and had changed the creature called Mips into bad Nicks. Then, by controlling the planet's orbit, he had let Sonic run into his trap. Hot, hot now, I thought you, you spiky blue freak. You won't stop me this time. Sonic must free the captive Mips, make his way to the new dead egg and destroy it quickly. If he fails, the world will belong to Robotnik forever. Now this is a Sonic plot. It's pretty standard, kind of feels like a bizarre version of Sonic Colors. Actually, are the Mips like a prototype of the Wisps? Yeah, kind of going off track here. So yeah, those are the Sonic Extreme plots. However, since the game got canned, we don't really know how the entire plot would have played out. We don't know what the deal with Tiara is, or Dr. Babowski is, we don't know squat. What we do know is that Chris and himself tried to complete the game in 2010 as Project S. However, it little changed to a game inspired by it, and later changed again to a cancelled game just like it's that. There's a bunch of information about the development and legacy of Sonic Extreme. It's pretty impressive how a game that never came out still managed to have an impact on the franchise as a whole, and for that, it will always be remembered. The plot of Sonic games range from super serious to another episode of the cartoon show, but at least all of them are entertaining and good. Oof. Fuck you!